All right, it's Henry again, and I get quite a few questions about primers, so I figured I would make a primer tutorial. All right, um, primer is a type of paint. It's uh, going to act as a base layer to your main paint job. Primer usually only comes in a handful of colors. Most of the time you'll see it in gray. Uh, you'll see it in white, uh, sometimes black, and every now and then you'll see red primer. It's really more of a, a reddish brown muddy color, but you won't see that too often anyway. Primer has uh, a few uses that are uh, pretty good in modeling. Your main use is going to be to cover up the color of uh, your underlying plastic. Uh, like this guy, for example. It's kind of this kind of purplish color. Um, say you wanted to paint this thing white. Well, if you just spray white paint on this, there's a very good chance that that purplish color is still going to show through the white paint. Uh, that's what primer is for. It's going to, it's an extremely opaque paint. It's going to completely cover up the color of the plastic. So, uh, any, especially with, with red parts and yellow parts, I have found. Um, something about the dye and red and yellow parts will seep up through the uh, paint job. I've actually even had the yellow and red dye seep up through a uh, primer before, um, spray can primers. I haven't had that happen with Mr. Surfacer, which is the reason I use it. But uh, yeah, it's going to prevent any of those underlying colors from uh, coming up and screwing around with your paint job. Uh, also, primer will give the paint something to stick to. Uh, yeah, paint will stick to plastic, but it sticks to primer better. Um, a lot of people um, will ask me, you know, is there a certain uh, primer or brand of primer that I can use that will prevent uh, my paint from getting scratched off of my kits? And the short answer to that is, unfortunately, no. Um, there's no magical primer that will completely 100% prevent uh, your paint from getting scratched. If you scratch it hard enough, the paint's going to come off. But primer will help. Primer will definitely help with that. Um, it gives the paint something to latch onto. And uh, also masking. Um, if you're doing masking uh, and painting, using primer will also reduce the risk of the paint peeling up when you peel the masking tape off. Uh, again, that's not going to 100% prevent it, but if you use primer and low-tack masking tape that's actually meant for painting, then uh, you should be good to go. All right, um, also, another really useful, in fact, to me, the most useful use of primer is uh, it will allow you to see imperfections in your kit. You know, sometimes you'll just be looking at the bare plastic under really bright lights like I am here, and you can't really see every teeny tiny imperfection, especially, this is especially good when you're uh, doing any sort of uh, modifications to your kits. Um, you spray over this uh, with a coat of primer like I will in just a little bit, and all of those imperfections are going to really come out and you'll be able to see exactly where you need to do uh, cleanup on your kits. Uh, seam lines, uh, if you're filling in seam lines with cement or putty or whatever, and you sand over that, sometimes it's kind of hard to see if it's completely gone, but you put a uh, coat of primer on there, you will see exactly where your seam line stands. Okay, uh, oh, one last thing. It, it does sort of protect the plastic a little bit. Uh, some of these paints that we use in this hobby are uh, pretty corrosive stuff, like lacquer thinner, and primer is going to form sort of a barrier between the paint job and the plastic. And I know that sounds sort of weird, seeing as how the primer, at least Mr. Surfacer anyway, is lacquer based. Um, so that doesn't make it a lot of sense uh, right off the bat. But trust me, it'll it'll help protect the plastic. Because uh, lacquer thinner and plastic, it, it does tend to make it sort of brittle. I mean, I don't know, it's just one of those things that you don't want to happen. You don't want to be uh, painting a kit and have uh, too much thinner in your paint and end up uh, breaking apart, so that's, that's never a good thing. Anyway, uh, there are several brands of primer out there. I don't have any spray cans on me at the moment, um, but I do have pictures of spray cans. 
you can get like a primer at the hardware store. Uh, Krylon is a primer that a lot of uh, people who are new to the hobby that aren't into airbrushing yet, they'll use uh, Krylon. Color Place is dirt cheap. Like this stuff is seriously like almost a, a dollar a can. Uh, not the best primer in the world, but it's dirt cheap, like I said. Also, you can uh, get like official primers made for model kits like Tamiya. Uh, Mr. Surfacer also is available in a spray can. Um, testers and model masters and all sorts, pretty much any company that makes paint will also make primer. So uh, you've got spray can options. You've got airbrush options. Uh, Tamiya makes their primer in a bottle as well for airbrushing. Um, I've seen Model Master also make bottled primer and just, you know, pretty much get on Google, go on forums, look up all your options, and, excuse me, uh, decide which one you think is best for you. All right, so um, another question I get is one that I sort of hesitate even answering is, do I need a primer? And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to say yes. Primer is never not a good idea. Um, there are scenarios where you can uh, get away without using primer, but those are really so specific that I don't want to tell them to you and have somebody paint their kit with like lacquer paint and not use primer and then something mess up and then blame me for it. So here for this video, I'm telling you, yes, use primer before you paint. Um, it's never not a good idea. Like I said, it's <laughs> using primer is always better than not using primer, except for clear parts, which you obviously want to remain clear. Okay, um, I'm going to cut the video here and get my uh, airbrush set up, and I'll show you a little bit about actually spraying the primer on. Okay, so now we're ready to do a little bit of spraying. Um, thinning and spraying primer is pretty much no different than uh, paint. So instead of going over all that again, I'll just ask you to refer to parts three and four of my airbrush tutorial, because all of the uh, techniques I discussed there about uh, thinning and spraying paint can also be applied to primer. Uh, one thing I do want to mention about thinning primer, um, when I first started using uh, airbrush primer, I was thinning it with regular hardware store lacquer thinner, and I found that the primer went on not nearly as smooth as I would have liked. In fact, it came out really kind of gritty, and I uh, had to end up sanding uh, the primer, I mean, not all the way uh, gone, but just sanding it down smooth after spraying it, and it was really kind of a pain in the ass. So, uh, since I've started using the Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, this stuff works wonders with primer. Every time I spray with now, uh, with the Leveling Thinner, it goes on smooth as silk. No problems at all. And I don't have to thin it uh, quite as much as with the Hardware Store Lacquer Thinner. Okay, um, one thing I will mention real quick about uh, Mr. Surfacer uh, specifically is uh, a lot of you who use this know that it does have different uh, numbers. They have 500, 1000, 1200, and 1500. Uh, basically, it's kind of like sandpaper. Um, the lower the number, the coarser the feel, the higher the number, the smoother it's going to be. Um, 1000 and 1200 are kind of in the mid range. Uh, 500 is sort of a, a, a rougher texture, um, which can be useful for uh, filling in like uh, minute surface imperfections or uh, doing like really rough, gritty, weathered paint jobs. And then like the 1500 is like super smooth. That's what you want to be using if you're doing like a high gloss paint job. So anyway, um, one last thing before we spray. Resin, uh, you do not have the option of not priming with resin. Polyurethane resin is not anywhere near as friendly uh, with paint as polystyrene plastic. So, uh, you know, with resin, you got to wash the parts with detergent, then sand the surface, then prime it, and then paint it. They even make special uh, primers just for resin. This will work on resin, but they do make resin primer that is even more well-suited to resin parts, so definitely prime resin. Uh, 
every time, 100% of the time, no questions asked. Okay, so I'm going to flip the spray booth on and just paint a couple parts on camera. Here's the part we had earlier. And kind of just like the paint, uh, same concept, you're just going to want to work in nice thin coats. And for primer, I usually can get the job done in just two coats. Um, it's very rare that I end up having to use three. And as you can see, it's really, really opaque. There's no uh, hint of that purple color showing up through there. So it's really, really uh, covering up that plastic color, which is what you want the primer to do. Now, uh, in terms of showing off imperfections on a, a piece you may be working on, like under really bright light, you might not can see all your imperfections so well. But uh, once you put the primer on there, you can really get a sense of how much cleanup you need to do. It's like I haven't done any cleanup on this part at all, so there's going to be a lot of imperfections that you'll see once I get this primer on here. There we go, just a nice even coat like that. And there we go. See so there you can see all the little scuffs and scrapes on there that need to be sanded down and cleaned up up in here, just all over the place. The primer is really going to let you, uh, it's going to take everything all to one color and let you see all of those imperfections much, much better. I'll do one more before we go. See, this is a part that I've done a little bit of sanding and cleanup on, but you get that primer on there and everything is going to pop out. And that's really the key to uh, getting a perfect, clean uh, finish on your kit, is going over it with primer and then going back and sanding away the imperfections and cleaning those up. And honestly, this part's a bit smoother than I thought it would be. As you can see here, there's a lot of roughness around the uh, rectangular shaped hole there. There's some roughness around this edge here and up here could use some more putty. So primer is very, very good at showing you how much work you have left to do on your kits. So I think I have covered just about everything I can uh, come up with. Uh, if anybody has any uh, extra pointers on primer, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, and I think that just about does it for me. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.